In the tunnel. In the tunnel. In the tunnel. You're listening to In the Tunnel. Hello and welcome to In the Tunnel, episode number 78. Uh, yeah, in true fashion, we are just gonna get on with it. So, uh, we, 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 we tried to do this yesterday. Yeah. And of all people, Sean had the tech issues. And so we're just, you know, we're running against the clock here because we don't know if we were going to make it today. So right. let's, let's just get into this. So, also in true in the tunnel fashion, let's start with the NFL. And sure. let's look at last week's standings. As this week has already started. Yes. Uh, Please, so what, Will we remember what our talking points were from yesterday, other than that we don't really care about talking about the NFC South? Yeah, um, we're surprised that the Steelers are still 8-0. They won't be for long. Won't be for Especially long. Especially if Mason Rudolph plays. Yeah, that's what we said. Uh, I'd rather Dobbs play because he actually has a degree, basically, that qualifies him as a rocket scientist, and he did internships with NASA. But something tells me we're going to throw an Oklahoma State cowboy out there if if Ben doesn't play. All right. Um. Yeah, the AFC East is a... Well, the top two teams are pretty good. Um, yeah, as most divisions are. Yeah, I mean, there's a pretty big disparity between first and last, though. This this, this is true, but I'm more looking between first and second. True, true. Uh, NFC East, it's still bad. We will talk about it. <laughs> NFC West, it's still good. Other than the 49ers, we won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Uh, Mostly because by the time that we would get to the end of the topic, another two or three players would either get COVID or get injured. Yeah. Uh, the AFC West, like, it's still a pretty big gap for the Chiefs and the rest of the league. Yep. Because, I mean, no offense to the Raiders, because, like, they are playing better football than they've played in the past four or five years. Dude, they're probably playing better football since I've been alive, dude. Well, they did have that one season, like 2015 or something. Uh, okay. They got to the playoffs, but their quarterbacks got hurt. Yeah, and they had yeah. to like throw in a third stringer for a playoff game. Like, yeah, they should. They should have made one a game that round their, mm. of that playoff season. But their car was out for the year at that point. Yeah. Um. Otherwise, everything's still looking like last week. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, nothing much changed. All right. Uh, I will say the Jaguars being one in seven kind of surprises me mostly because I don't pay attention to them. I thought they had like three wins. The uh, fact that I just now I'm noticing that they only have one. Why did I think they were two and six and not even look at them? <laughs> See, but the thing is, we watched the Jets Patriots game on Monday night, and everybody's rooting for the Jets to lose so that Trevor Lawrence doesn't go to the Patriots. And we're completely bypassing the fact. That he could go to a team like the Jaguars or the Texans. I mean, no, Trevor Lawrence isn't going to the Texans. They're they're not going to give up on Watson. But I don't think so. Uh, I'd rather. Would you rather the Giants have Lawrence? Probably not, dude. You'd rather Daniel Jones? I mean, we've already committed this much. I mean, Saquon and <laughs> Saquon and Trevor Lawrence would be a, a pair. Yeah, I know, but, like, the Giants have already that, thrown themselves in the dumpster offense, fire this much. Behind that offensive line, they'd be a pair on the sideline and or IR. Yeah. So, let's fix that first. I mean, it's been, like, what, five years since you guys had a good offensive line? How long does it take to draft five players in the first two rounds? Yeah, That are going to, like, protect the team. I don't know, dude. But then again, the whole NFC East doesn't have a good anything, so. This is true. You, you can't really argue with that logic. 
and one of them's making the playoffs. Well, if the NFL expansion happens where there's games postponed and it goes up to 16 teams making the playoffs, <laughs> two of those teams are making the playoffs. <laughs> Uh, not something you want to see, man. Because, I mean, think about it this way. It's the top 16 teams, so the top eight teams in each conference. Yep. If you look at just, like, the number one and number two seeds Mm -hmm. in each division, like, I don't know, like, the Bears being five and five, five and, or no, like, I we guess we have to look at like the three seeds in other divisions. You have to look at the, the Rams, Vikings, dude. The 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 five and three Rams, but the Falcons and Vikings are both only sitting at three wins. Yeah, the Rams and the Forty ers are coincidentally the only two teams that could take the spot. So and now we talked about the Forty ers God damn it, man! <laughs> well, I had to, dude. Yeah. Um, no, you're right, you're right, you did what you needed to do. Uh, yeah, alright, you wanna just, let's get on to the games, man? Sure. Uh, so yeah, yesterday good. had Indianapolis at Tennessee. Yes, sir, and Indianapolis beat Tennessee's butt. Yeah. Tennessee signed a punter, uh, off the street this week. And the poor guy got a punt block in his first football game. Oh, my God. Oh, the poor guy. Yeah, poor guy. All right. Anything else you want to say about that game? Not really. I was playing deck hockey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, All right. I I wish Derrick Henry scored a touchdown. (laughs) All right. Uh, Houston at Cleveland, our first game to look at then. Right. Uh, Houston at Cleveland, it's Houston, or no, Cleveland now by three and a half. I think yesterday when we tried this, it was two and a half. Yep. Um, the over-under is 46 and a half, so it went down half a point from yesterday. hmm And we said yesterday, we don't know that we trust the Texans to have more than two touchdowns. Yeah. In this one, which makes it hard to believe that the Browns are going to put up Four, especially or without five? Odell. Especially without Odell. Yeah, four or five. Mm-hmm. Like Odell's a cancer, but he's good for at least one touchdown there. Yep. And um, yeah, I, I think it's the Browns, but I don't think it's forty-six and a half. Yeah. Okay. Wasn't it like forty-nine yesterday or forty-seven? Oh. We we were calculating seven touchdowns, getting the over to. But that yeah, would take it that's not happening. Yeah, okay. Nope. nope. Uh, all right. Cincy at Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburgh loses this one, right? Quite handily. Quite handedly. It's. I think Joe Burrow is good. I don't know that he's dominate the Steelers' defense good. Uh, but I'm it's... not saying he needs to dominate the Steelers' defense. I'm saying the Steelers' offense isn't going to do anything. So, well, if Ben plays are fine. All right. There, there's still. We said this yesterday when we tried to record too. There's still been no developments that Ben is not going to play. Oh, okay, okay. As recently as I believe today, mm-hmm. they're still assuming Ben's going to be okay enough to play. He's still getting negative tests. As well. All right. So as long as he tests negative up till Sunday, he's fine. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, do you want to go over the lines and stuff for that? Uh, over under is forty five and a half right now with the Steelers negative or um sorry in favor by seven. Forty five and a half. That's a is... hard one to call though because if Ben doesn't play, then it completely flips. But if Ben yeah, plays, but... I could see it. But I think that the Bengals recently have been putting up some pretty good points. Let's see here. Do 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 do. So the Bengals. Week three, put up 23 points. Week four, uh, 33. Week five, they lost to the Ravens, 27-3. Then they went back and lost 27-31. Uh, one, or I'm sorry, lost 37-34 and won 31-20. So they're a high-scoring offense. Yeah, so I mean... Other than the Ravens. 
Dude, the thing is, like, I could see them scoring three, right? So it's, and you see the Steelers scoring four, right? I think the Steelers are good for about 25 points per game. So you're oh. at a maybe. Wait, let's let's find this out. Steelers 28, 38, 38, 27, 28, 24 in their respective games. The All right, so scoring, I'll take the, the over lowest on that scoring one. the lower scoring game they've had this season was 24 points. I'll take the over on that one then. Mm-hmm. The the thing is about that game is if the Steelers get ahead, they'll just run the ball and run the clock out. Yeah. They won't they're not in the A B Bell era anymore where where they'll push that until like the wheels fall off. Yep. Uh alright, so then uh looking at a Sunday game. And wait, why does that say Sunday next to it? Doesn't make sense. Is that a night game? What? Which game? Uh Chargers at Miami. Chargers in my four o'clock in. Oh, it's a four o'clock Sunday game. Okay. All right. Um, let's see here. The Chargers are underdogs by a point and a half. Forty-eight and a half is the over/under. I Miami, will take the under on that one. Miami's been putting up points, and so has Justin Herbert. But forty-eight and a half seems a little bit lofty. I'll let's, take the under on that one. Uh, in the last five games. Or one, two, three, four, five, six games. The lowest that the Chargers have put up in terms of points is sixteen, and the highest that they've put up is thirty-one. Mm-hmm. Or I'm sorry, thirty-nine. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in that same time span, the lowest that the Dolphins have put up is twenty-three points. Okay, but the highest that they've put up is forty-three, mm-hmm. and that went against San Francisco. The Chargers' defense doesn't scare me. Yeah. But the Chargers, I think we said this when we tried to record yesterday, the Chargers' defense will never scare me. Never. You said it, that. It, it, maybe it's the uniforms, but powder <laughs> blue does not scare. But then again, Miami's defense is good this, good this year too. And their defense is never going to scare me, despite the fact that they're actually good. It's, again, the uniforms. <laughs> Tropical colors don't scare they impress, but they don't scare. Yeah. All right. Um. All right. So Denver at Las Vegas. Denver at Las Vegas. Las Vegas by four with an over under of 51. That went up from yesterday. That over under is high, but I feel like in my hip because I don't know that either like. Denver I don't trust some, either's defense is true. I don't trust either's defenses. And even if Von Miller was healthy this year and playing this year, Von Miller couldn't stop that. Yeah, really. So I'd say I think Denver wins though. I'll, I'll Jerry go. Judy. I'll Jerry Judy's been balling. Jerry Judy's been balling. Tim Patrick isn't a bad receiver. Uh KJ Hamler's a decent slot option. So with Cortland Sutton out there getting hmm. reps in for their young guys. All right. And last AFC game we have is Baltimore at New England. Uh, I mean, we really don't need to go into too much detail there unless Belichick fucks up some mainframe. Uh, it's going to be uh, – it's Baltimore only by seven. But the over-under is 43.5. That might be uh, – is it? Let me pose You're this really- question to you. Do you think that the over under of 43 in Vikings Bears or 43 and a half in Ravens Patriots, which would you take if you had to pick one? Vikings Bears. Really with that Bears shitty offense? I I mean Dalvin Cook could probably put up like 35 points of that on his own, but I know. Like I would probably trust Cook. To put not even like he doesn't even need to put thirty five of it on his own. If he puts like twenty eight of it on his own, or like major contributions to twenty eight of it, that it's in the bag. Yeah, that's true. All right, let's see here. All right, um, next game we have inter interleague games, not intercontinental games. I don't know what I was thinking. Interleague. 
intra league games. Jacksonville. I'm sorry, inter- no, intra is within the same yeah. conference. Inter league. Inter inter league, right? In, yeah. I, look, I'm not enunciating. It's after work, fucking hours. <laughs> uh, Jaguars at Green. Speaking Bay. of speaking of pronunciations, Jaguars. <laughs> All right, uh, Jaguars. Let's see here. Yeah, I have to score all the way up to the one PM games because there's no way this thing was going to be prime time. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's a one. It's the Packers by thirteen and a half. The over under is forty nine. You might as well take the over because Green Bay is going to do a lot of the heavy lift in there. Yeah. All right, like, and... it's, it's a high over, but it's not right. high enough for Aaron Rodgers. And Buffalo at Arizona. I like Arizona. You told me uh, I said I like Buffalo. Buffalo. It's Arizona by two and a half. I said I like and Buffalo. I, and I told you yesterday, Kyler Murray is primed to be the first player ever to pass yeah. for 4,000 and rush for 1,000. Yep. Mostly because Lamar Jackson can't throw the ball. Otherwise, he probably would have done this already. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, again, I just like Buffalo, I think. Uh, I'm I'm going to to put a king's ransom of maybe two dollars on the cardinals okay uh all right and on to the nfc the philadelphia eagles at the giants i need the pic- the line for this one is just a picture of a dumpster <laughs> oh boy uh it's the eagles by three and a half the over under 44 and a half that's pretty Probably high, man, for this dumpster fire of a game. Pretty high? I don't know. I think it's low. The, this, the Giants are feisty. The Giants are like a good bad. But the <laughs> the Eagles are just like a, like, I don't even know what the adjective for the Eagles is. I don't know. Philly scum, like some people are going to love it, but the rest of the world is going to look at it and poke it with a stick like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck's wrong with this shit? (laughs) Yeah, Uh, I don't know. I just like the games that the NFC East have are just bad, dude. Yeah, which is weird because every week seems to have at least one one NFC East showdown. Yeah, I know. Why can't they have a few weeks where they just take that off? (laughs) Anyway, Washington plays Detroit next. Oh, boy. Speaking of dumpster fires, holy shit. Washington could actually be decent if, like, they had more than one good wide receiver and an actual quarterback. Yes. Uh, And maybe a football field that doesn't eat quarterbacks alive. (laughs) Because now I think they're back to Alex Smith, and I'm just worried. (laughs) All right. Um. It's the Lions by four and a half over under 46 and a half. I'm taking the under, mm-hmm. but as this is also a matchup where defenses do not scare me still. Yeah, but Even I don't though, think offensive scare me either. Well, the thing is the Lions drafted in the top 10, you know, defensive players this year. Yeah. Like uh, I think at number three, they took a cornerback. Then they went out and spent a boatload of money on defensive players. Yeah. And I still don't know if I care at all about that defense. Yeah, but, like, I I still don't know how much I'm scared of their offenses running it away. Yeah, no. You know? Look, I'm I'm not scared of the Lions passing game, and I'm not scared of anything that the Washington Washington team... Yeah. Does on any side of offensive ball. Yep. All right. On to Tampa Bay at Carolina. I take Carolina. After what they almost did to the Chiefs last week. Yeah. And by the way, I finally saw the video of that the Panthers kicker that was he had enough leg to knock through a sixty seven yarder. He just pooched it wide. So I mean, I don't know. The Panthers are close enough. And Tom Brady, I mean, Tom Brady, the, the only thing is he doesn't tend to lose twice in a row. Yeah. So that that's the, the coin toss part of it. <laughs> um, no, All right, I moving think, on. I think I'll yeah, take no, Carolina good. there. All right. Uh, yeah, anyway. At least um, it's Carolina plus six. I'd take Carolina plus six, or at least I move the line to like plus eight. 
Hmm. Okay. Make it a two, uh, one score extended game. That's why I call it a uh, eight point game or like a touch on two point conversion is a one score extended. All right. Anyway, on to Seattle at Los Angeles. When did St. Louis get another team? I I don't know. You said Seattle, and I started thinking St. Louis, and I just <laughs> wait a minute. That. That's nothing. I'm just thinking S. Um. So it's the Rams by one and a half. How? I can see. They are Wilson. aware that no, but you, Russell Wilson has like 28 pass touchdowns. Yeah, I don't know. I I could see why the line's there, but I still think Seattle's gonna win. I take Seattle plus one and a half any day. It the over under is fifty four and a half. Yeah, uh, I, I I'd move that I to like fifty. I'd move that to like fifty two, fifty one maybe. Oh, I could I could see fifty four and a like. I could see a I high score. I don't know game. that I see the Rams putting up 25. But in a like, 54 and a half, do you see Seattle putting up like 35? Yeah, Russell Wilson has 28 pass touchdowns. Yes, exactly. So that means the Rams only have to score 20. Well, let's take a look at it. the Rams in the last five games or six games have put up 17, 24, 16, 30, 17, 32. So in <laughs> four of the last six, they've put up sub twenty four. Yes, but also in the other half, they put up up <laughs> against the Giants in Washington. Or I'm sorry, the Bills in Washington. Yeah, they only put up seventeen on the Giants. Yeah. So it could go so either you, way. The Bills are yeah, a it could team. go either way. Yeah, but the Giants aren't. Yeah, exactly. So it could go either way. I can see why the line's there. That's all I'm saying. I'm not. All right. Uh, San Francisco at New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah. Just, just take New Orleans. Yeah. Um, Been there, done that. <laughs> moving on. Yeah, all right. And last game is Minnesota. Minnesota at Chicago. Minnesota at Chicago. Uh, I got Minnesota. Dalvin Cook's on fire. Yep. All right. So let's take a look at the current playoff picture. All right. You want to look at this? Sure. So, uh, this is if there are what eight teams. Yeah, this is under the assumption that normally... Um, if there's that, an extra team, I think. This is under the assumption nothing gets uh, canceled uh, uh, due to COVID, and then it pushes to 16 teams. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so, all right, yeah. so currently the Steelers have a first-round bye. Not surprised, they're 8-0. No. The only one because of the new structure. Yeah. Uh, and... New Orleans currently has it for the NFC. Yep. Uh, you would see Kansas City and Miami in the first round, Buffalo and Las Vegas, and then Tennessee and Baltimore. Uh, yep. Those seem like pretty good matchups, I think. Yep. All right, and then in the NFC, you would see Seattle at, or Seattle and... Los Angeles. Why do I always feel like we get a Green Bay Arizona like wild card game? It, like Green it's Bay happened Arizona. like it's happened like three times in the past de- decade, all in the same round. Yeah, Green Bay Arizona, and then the Eagles and Tampa Bay. I feel like that would be a close game just based on like looking at the logos and historically the Eagles and Tampa Bay. Yeah, and then you like look at the roster and you're like, oh. No. No, 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 no. <laughs> So uh, basically the playoffs start today for the, the Seahawks and the Rams, though, because, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, I think that, and then the Titans-Ravens, I think that was the AFC Championship game. Or no, it wasn't. It wasn't the AFC Championship game because the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Yep. Um, The Titans, oh, no, it was a wild card game where the Titans beat the wild card or divisional. I think Titans it's division. Beat yeah, beat the Ravens. At home, too. 
All right. Yeah, I mean, I think these are pretty good matchups with the way the teams have been playing. Aside from Absolutely. the last one. Uh... I think that the Raiders-Bills game could be pretty good, too. I as you know, I feel bad because Miami is a feel good story this year, but then they walk right into that Kansas City shit. Yeah, I don't like that one. No, nope. not for them. No, nope, not good. All right, anything else you want to say? Look, I don't want like the Chiefs to suffer a COVID outbreak or anything, but I- I'd like for them to like get rid of a receiver too and bring themselves back down to earth. <laughs> In the salary cap era, they shouldn't have that much of a roster. Like, the Steelers, when they had A.B., Ben, Bell, Heath Miller, all those guys, they couldn't do shit like this. Mm-hmm. Like, they didn't have a roster like this. Yep. All right. Just remember, yeah. you put all your eggs in the basket of offense, and you don't have a defense that's going to win it. That's always, you know, defense still wins championships in football. It doesn't in basketball, but it does in football. Basketball, what is defense, dude? Hockey? I mean, there are defensemen. There are shot shots No, blocked. no, I'm saying to basketball players, defense is so foreign, it's called hockey. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, anyway, moving on. Let's uh, take a break from professional football and move on to college football. Oh, good. I was worried. Um, yeah, so, um, there's not much to go on here. Notre Dame, uh, one and two overtimes against Clemson, Mm -hmm. just proving again that Clemson is always due for some kind of letdown. Yep. Trevor Lawrence, this is on your shoulders for getting, you know, the virus. Maybe if you didn't have such a fucking big nose, it wouldn't happen, but. Uh, I and mean, now Alabama, Alabama's back in front, which is yeah, just, you know, that's traditionalism at its finest. Iowa State um, still three. Yep. Uh, I mean, like aside from BYU that, being eight is kind of weird. Just yeah. looking at a logo that sees BYU anywhere near the top ten. Yeah. Uh, Marshall doesn't play a strong schedule, but if you're interested in betting, they have like the wildest fucking point spreads ever. Like last week, you couldn't even bet money line on them because it the the spread was like forty some points. <laughs> so it, you couldn't bet money line. It basically would have netted no money. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, all right, and then like I don't know, Georgia's at twelve, right? Yeah. Auburn's Wisconsin's at, at 13, despite the fact that they're probably not going to play another game this season. They played one game, and they're just going to sit in the middle of the rankings for the rest of the year. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh, Liberty beat Virginia Tech this weekend. Liberty's undefeated. They're like 8-0. Oh. Okay. So they're it. This is probably and the only time you'll see Liberty on the top 25. This, Especially this time of year is the only time you'll hear about Liberty. <laughs> Not the school, just the concept. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so apparently, uh, we have a playoff predictor that ran that gave Alabama an eighty-seven percent chance to make it. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it, it nobody else is going to. Also, I like the fu- it, it, this just shows how stupid the college football playoff is. Georgia's ranked number 12, and they have the fifth best odds. I know, at 25% almost, dude. Oregon's played one game in their seventh. (sighs) And Notre Dame somehow is, first of all, Wisconsin, 47% chance to make it, despite the fact that they're probably not going to play another game this year. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. This, This stuff is all crazy, man. Look, man, just give BYU a shot. They have a thirteen percent not... chance, man. Don't don't I mean, that, don't count that's them out. Better than that's better than Pitt. Yeah. Uh, Pitt made their not so graceful fall from the top twenty-five, right? Yeah, like four weeks ago, they lost like three straight games. Yeah. <laughs> 
And it I mean, was so funny because the local radio here was like looking at their schedule, like after week three, being like, "I really can't see them losing in the next four weeks," <laughs> and then they lost three in a row. Uh, oh, local radio! You gotta love local sports radio. The same assholes like in the New York market are like, I think that the Giants have, and the Jets have a chance here. Jets seven and nine, Giants ten and six, and. <laughs> Oh, whoever said that's crazy right now, man. Well, somebody, that's the thing about sports radio. Someone has to be bold enough to say it. Because <laughs> that's how you get your money is you, you, you get clicks and big takes. Yeah. There's no way. All right. Anyway, on, on to the MLB. So wheel spins. It's off season and we have wheel spin. Uh, Free y'all... agency predictor edition. Yep. All right, so the most depressing time of the year where you watch guys who get three swings of a bat, or I'm sorry, uh, three at bats, and to stand in one of nine positions, getting paid far more than you'll ever make in your career. Yep, maybe the laziest you can be to get the most money. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, yeah, so let's just, uh, we're going to start at the top with uh, George Springer, an outfielder. Yes, and just remember for all, you know, listeners of the show and new listeners, the wheel does not, is not weighted any differently than as if all 30 teams had the same odds. We didn't weigh the Dodgers and the Yankees higher because of payroll. We want to make this as stupid as possible. <laughs> Because that's what entertainment is, is finding the reality of the situation and throwing it right out the window. Yeah, so, uh, let's see. At no point in our podcast description does it say accurate sports information. All right, well. All right, George Springer's going to the Rays. We got to find out for how much. I don't think I created a year's wheel, did I? No. Oh. You know, fuck it. Divide by whatever. <laughs> Divide by N. <laughs> For all you science fuckers out there. And all you math fuckers. Figure out the length of uh, George Springer's contract. Divide money by N. Let me know when you get your uh, thesis sorted and I'll give you internship hours. All right. Keep in mind, I'm not qualified to do that at all. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so let's see how much. Actually, soon enough, I will be qualified. I'll have a master's degree. Technically, I'm qualified to give internships. <laughs> anyway, uh, how much per year is he getting? We don't really care uh, about how long. Uh, Two million. All right. <laughs> Bargain bin hunting. Tampa Bay's going back to the World Series with that kind of money. Let's just say, you know what? Fuck it. Uh... All right, let's. All right, stall for me here. We're gonna create a fucking wheel on the go. Uh, All right. Do, 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 I mean, do, are do, we? Do. I mean, I, I am. All right, and now we're gonna spin the year's wheel on my side, and George Springer one year, two million dollar deal. <laughs> oh boy, win now, huh? <laughs> win now very cheaply. I mean, it, it's Tropicana Field, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, on to Nelson Cruz. Although, is two million a year when they play in Montreal? Is that like the equivalent of like I don't know what the currency is up there? Canadian dollars. Uh, that's not a fun name. They really got to change that. <laughs> All right. Uh, JT. No, no, Nelson Cruz. Nelson Cruz, formerly of the Twins, now of the... All right, he's going back to the Mariners, where he was in 2019. That worked out splendidly. And for how many years it is going to be... Oh, boy. Four years. I, you know, probably not the best idea, because Nelson Cruz is... I'm, I believe, north of 40 years old, but, you know, it's a money league, and he's 40, so why not? 
You got money to burn if you're Seattle. All right, and how much? Any though? anything for Seattle to be? I don't know, five games back of a wild card spot because they that's where they just. How much live. are they overpaying him? What do you think? Five million a year. Oh for yeah, four years, twenty million dollar deal. In 2016, he made 14 million in a year, so it hasn't dropped off too much. Actually, kind of has, but for 40, that's not a big drop off. Yeah. All right. All right. JT. Real Muto. Real Muto. Okay. Thankfully, we have somebody who can actually say names. Uh, I just did a Google search on him, and oh. the the first thing that comes up after his name is name. All right, so he's going to Cincinnati. All right, and he's going to Cincinnati, Ohio for one year. One year. For okay. a 29-year-old, he's in his prime. I'm surprised he only gets a one-year contract. I mean, Cincinnati, do you really want to be there longer for the one year? Like, enough Skyline Chili to, like, blow out your ass and then leave. He gets paid, though, for that year. Uh, twenty million dollars here. Keep in mind, in twenty nineteen, he made five point nine million. Big jump, big jump. Yeah. All, All right. right. All right. On to Michael Brantley. Yeah, let's get this one in before uh, he signs an extension with the Astros, because apparently they're talking about it. <laughs> yeah. It would be funny if the Astros going popped to up the here. Diamondbacks. So he's going a little bit more west. For two years, he is 33. For the next two years, he'll be making how much a year? Uh, we will see. Apparently, it's quite a lot. 25, 25 million a year. Yeah, all right. And on to Trevor Bauer. All right. The now NL Cy Young winner. Mm -hmm. He's 29 from Hollywood. He's he's going to the Pittsburgh Pirates. I I bet it's a one-year deal. And and nope, it's a four-year deal. Because you got to overpay, get rid of Chris Archer and overpay somebody else. Whoa, hold on. They might get a steal. You never know. Nope, they won't. It's the Pirates. <laughs> no. $35 million a year. Uh, you know, they've never spent above $10 million a year on a player in the past, like, ever. So, this is... You know, it's it's right up there, Allie. I don't know what you're talking about. Right up somebody's alley, that's for damn sure. All right, Adam Wainwright. Okay. He's going to the Texas Rangers. Well, that makes sense to me, actually. Oh, boy, but this doesn't. Because keep in mind, Adam Wainwright, 39 years old. Mm-hmm. Seven-year deal. Seven years. <laughs> It's the max on the wheel. <laughs> Five million a year. That's that's just bad, man. <laughs> that's like Bartolo Cologne plus bad. <laughs> uh all right. Uh DJ Lemayu. Right, DJ Lemayu. Uh, he goes, oh, almost back to the Yankees, but to the Twins. They don't have enough uh, hitters there. They got to get more. He's going to go to the Twins for three years. All right. Uh, and for how much money? If he doesn't get paid, there's a problem. All the fucking money. I think the max on this is above what? Or uh, is forty million? No, he gets twenty million a year. I, I did intervals. All right. Uh, you you want to help me pronounce that next name? 
Marcus Semyon. Okay, I'm guess- cool. I'm guessing here. All right, you'd be guessing better than me because I can't pronounce names. That I can't recognize. All right, where is this shortstop going? To St. Louis. That makes sense to me for some reason. For three years. Three All right, years. and. Uh, think you should get paid decently, or? Nah, I've never heard of the guy who's 30, so probably not. Well, he gets $35 million a year. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just as we all expected. Oh, sure. Apparently he played for the White Sox before the A's. Never heard of him. All right, and then Marcel Ozuna? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry if I butchered that name, but no, I... you got it right. Okay, cool. Is there a France team, like a French team we can go to? Oh, uh, are the Washington Nationals French? Basically, <laughs> it's not a state. Two-year deal. All right. All right. We're just going to stick to one slide of uh, MLB free agency this today because we also have to do NBA mock draft. Yep, and uh, we're we're running at forty five minutes, so let's let's just charge along here. Yep, nobody's All right. interested in twenty five baseball players. He gets forty mil a year. That's bad. That's just bad. Hey, the wheel I mean, has spoken. For- Look, if you weren't going to pay Bryce Harper forty million a year, then the wheel Marcelo has spoken. Tuna isn't it? <laughs> All right, Justin Turner. He should just retire. You, you don't see a seven-year, forty million dollar contract? Probably not. The Oakland A's. I was really hoping he was going to go back to the Mets and just fuck up his career. That was close. Oh, it wasn't a five-year deal, by the way. He gets a six-year deal. Oh. Oh, so barely under seven then. He'll only be uh forty one when it's over. Yeah, but how much will he have made by forty one? No, three hundred mil. Apparently he gets twelve and a half million a year. That's reasonable. Not for six years, but it's reasonable otherwise. <laughs> it's reasonable for now. That, that might be the most reasonable contract other than the years. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? Uh, all right, Charlie Morton. Yes, the pride of Flemington, New Jersey. All right, let's find out which team he goes to. He goes to Pittsburgh Pirates. He comes back to us. I met him when he was with the Pirates last time. Nice. And it's going to be, he's 37 years old. Let's give him, oh yeah, six year deal. Let's go. We got Bauer and Morton. <laughs> oh boy, your team is yeah. not. We might crash the whole financial market for for all of Pittsburgh. Well, I he gets seven and a half million a year. No, I'm fine with that. We were <laughs> paying basically seven and a half million when he was on the team in the end. That's I'm I'm fine with that. Really, he, he can be here for as long as he wants. All right, and to finish it, we have Liam, Liam Hendricks. Hendricks. Where right. does he go? All the way home to his new home, which, which are the Cleveland, Cleveland Indians. Big rock and roll guy. You can tell by his ears. Holy shit, he's got big ears and eyebrows. For how long? Oh, about 32 millimeters. <laughs> One year deal. Okay. All right. Now the... <laughs> Legs are falling asleep. Let's fucking move on from baseball already. <laughs> All right. Well, how much does he make in that year? I don't fucking know enough to break the bank. If you said 10 oh, million, Jesus you're right. Christ. We said we were going to do a whole fucking first round of the NBA draft. <laughs> Oh boy. 
All right. Anyway, so that's our the free agents we wanted to look at for this episode. Well, the, the wheel says, or the wheels say, this is what they get. Hope you're happy. <laughs> All right. On to the NBA, mm-hmm. which is another... Wheel Spin wheel. City. This is a city where wheels fly. Or spin, not fly. Wheels can't fly. Actually, they can. Airplanes. Alright. Anyway. So, we have a bunch of uh, a bunch of draft eligible players on this wheel. And we're just going to go through. Who do they pick at what? Thank God. This is going to be a lot quicker than the MLB one. I will have um, I'll have some uh, schools, positions, stuff like that ready to go. All right, so yeah, let's uh, move on. So the Timberwolves have the first pick in this draft. So yep. let's see whom they choose, or who they choose, not whom. I'm bad at English anyway. I want to say I've been correcting your grammar since we were in middle school. I know. So, the. All right. So, this might be the most fucking accurate mock draft we've ever done already because LaMelo Ball, NBA Draft.net, as uh, going number two to the Warriors. But there is talk that LaMelo is the best prospect available. Okay. So, I'm going to the Timberwolves. May actually happen. Okay. Uh, he's a six foot. He's six foot eight. There's no fucking way. Six foot eight point guard. All right. I don't, so I don't think right. next pick, uh, the Warriors will then select Isaiah Dort. Six foot eight. Holy shit! Oh, okay. Isaiah Dort. I fucked this up now. All right. How do you spell? Oh, it said Stuart. I thought you said Dort. Dort, dude. What the heck? Uh, so is this draft still accurate? All right. Nope. Not at all. <laughs> Made a two pick. Projected to go number thirty-nine to the uh, Pelicans, uh, according to NBA Draft on Net. This Washington freshman, six foot nine, power forward and center. All right, going number two to Golden State. All right, uh, on to you the- know what? It may actually be accurate because Golden State may trade trade out of the pick. Oh, okay. Well, the third overall pick is James. And now we're ac- we're really accurate now. James Wiseman. NBA Draft.net has James Wiseman going number three what? to Charlotte. <laughs> Well, the wheel just recovered itself. Okay, maybe the most accurate we've ever been on a on a mock draft pick in any sport ever. Yep. All right. Uh, on to number four, the Chicago Bulls. They select Nate Hinton. Are you Nate? Or are you Mister Hinton? Oh boy. Number 51 to Golden State, the sophomore out of Houston, shooting guard, small forward combo. All right. Uh, that goes to the Bulls. At four. Which the Bulls are stupid, so, like, they could do that. All right. Uh, on to the fifth pick. All right. The Cavaliers. <laughs> Will they make a Cavalier move? I don't know. Well... Can you pronounce that? I can't even read it, dude. Precious. I can't even pronounce his last name. Let's see if I can find it. Do, 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 there, do. there you go. That... Uh, Precious Akiwa, I'm going to guess. Okay. Our forward projected to go number 16 to the Blazers. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, not at all. I'm sure the Cavs have another pick somewhere in this fucking draft. All right, anyway, on to the Hawks. Go hockey. 
the Hawk Select uh, number six, Isaac Okoro. Uh, uh, is it, all right, projected to go number nine, a freshman of Auburn, combo guard Isaac Okoro. I mean, that's okay. So this wheel today is surprisingly accurate, dude. Yeah. I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, the Pistons. Uh, Reggie Perry. Reggie Perry. Reggie Perry. Protected to go number 41 to the Spurs. All A right. sophomore from Mississippi State. So it ha- the wheel is going in spurts. It's basically like a malfunctioning <laughs> computer. <laughs> All right. Uh, next, the Knicks at the number eight pick. I don't know who's the fucking last ranked guy in here. Is it Jaden McDaniels? Uh, no, I cut it off at fifty. So he's projected to go number twenty-five. Uh, from Washington, a freshman power forward. Projected to go to the Thunder. Okay. Lightning before the thunder. All right, and then uh, the Wizards pick at nine. Kiroki. Uh, Jordan Nuara? Sure, why the fuck not? You think I know these names either? <laughs> Jordan, where are you? Jordan, 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 Jordan. Projected to go to number 50 to the Hawks from Louisville, a junior. Okay. Uh... On to the Phoenix Suns pick. Are you excited to see who you'll land? No. Malachi Flynn. I mean, they need a point guard, but I don't know about one named Malachi. Projected to go number 29 to the Raptors, a San Diego State junior. Okay. On to the Spurs. I don't know, some foreign dude. Danny Avdia? Sounds foreign to me. Here. Anything about that guy? Well, if I can fucking find him. <laughs> Alright, well, I'm just yeah, gonna... just move on. Huh? Move on. Okay, on to the second. Oh, wait, never mind, found it. He's from Israel, so he was foreign. Projected to go number six to the Hockeys. Oh, okay, well, he falls down. R.J. Hampton goes to the Kings. And he is projected to go 19 to the Nets. All right. Uh, then we have Alexi Pokus. Hockey guy. Just huh? call him hockey guy. Hockey guy. <laughs> and uh, Alexi Pokovsky, I don't know. He's from Serbia. He's going to the Sixers at number 34 projected. And he, instead, he's going to the Pelicans, which share the same color scheme. Sure. All right. And then the Boston Celtics at 14. Boston Celtics are always drafting, man. <laughs> they get Emmanuel quickly. Uh, well, I ain't going to find his name fucking quickly. Oh, there it is. Number 38 to the Knicks. He is a sophomore from Kentucky. Oh, okay. Well, you found that. Pretty quickly, if you ask. No, me. no jokes. <laughs> no Too jokes. Bad. All right. On to it, the Orlando Magic at 15. Again, some foreign dude, but this one won't work like the Spurs guy does. Ah, uh, Peyton Pritchard. Yeah, that's not foreign enough. <laughs> All right. Peyton Pritchard projected to go number 32 to the Hornets. He is a senior guard from Oregon. 
All right, then the Trailblazers. Trailing behind you, my love. Jalen Smith. He was projected to go number 14 to the Celtics. Power forward and sophomore from Maryland. Okay, so this one's not that off either. Nope, not as off as my brain. All right, the Timberwolves again. They had the first pick. Of course. Naturally, you get the first and 17th. Uh, Tyrese Maxey. Number 17 to the Timberwolves. A uh, 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 freshman guard from Kentucky. We've had now two picks right on the money, according to this mock. Oh, my God, dude. All right, the Mavericks at 18. Tyrell Terry. Make it three picks. No way. Yeah. Tyrell Terry, a freshman guard from Stanford. Didn't even have to scroll down for that one. Huh. All right. Well, we know we got the Nets one wrong because we already got that guy on the list earlier. RJ. RJ Hampton. Yeah. That would make for a good super team guy, though. Uh, So they get Vernon Carey. Projected instead. to go number 24 to the Buckaroonies. Uh, it is the Duke freshman, Vernon Carey. Vernon Carey. All right, then the Heat. Uh, they select Devin Vassell. 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 Uh, Predicted to go number 11 to the Spurs. He is a sophomore from Florida State. Okay. And then the 21st pick is the 76ers. How do they get two first-round picks? Didn't they fucking mortgage away their future? I thought it was the future after this. Theo It's Maladin? the process after this. Huh? It's the process after the process, man. There is no future now. Um... Projected to go number 22 to the Nuggets. Holy shit. France guard Theo Maladon. Oh, my God. He's a dawn. We, we're one pick off. NBA is predictable. What can I say? Uh, so, the instead, at number 22 goes Nico Mannion. Sure. Nico, where are you, Nico? Seriously, where the fuck are you, you little bastard? Oh, there he is. Projected to go number 23 <laughs> to the Jazz. He is a freshman from Arizona. All right, well, actually going at number 23 to the Jazz. I don't know the Jazz. Is Grant Riller? Can't be real. Projected to go number 45 to the Magic. He is a Charleston senior. Okay. And maybe he's one of the Charleston shoes. All right. Well, anyway, we have the Bucks at 24 next. All right. Uh, and they pick Ashton Hagen. Great breakfast name. Ashton Haggins. Oh, okay, it's it's clearly not. With the name Ashton, you're not getting drafted in the first round. So where is you? Oh, there it is. Number 57 to the Clippers. Okay, well, uh, now number 25 to the... Uh, what? The Thunder... Lightning before the lightning. Is Aaron Smith? Where it are you? Number 13 to the Pelicans. He's a Vanderbilt sophomore. Well, he apparently drops down almost double his pick. Sure, that's how that's how they evaluate drafts. It drops down double. <laughs> All right, anyway, on to the Celtics at 26, which they have two of the last five picks, so let's see. 
Devin Dotson. Point guard. Dotson projected to go number 35 to the Kings. A sophomore from Kansas. Okay. Then at 27, we have the New York Knicks. I think they have, what, pick 14 or something? Previously? Bears. They all blow. Sadiq Bay. Okay, well, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Okay, he's supposed to go to number 12 to the Kings. Huh? He's a Villanova sophomore. Oh, okay. Well, on to number 28, the Lakers. The first, the first Villanova player to ever leave early. <laughs> they all stay. Uh, They'll draft Paul Reed. Not a real name, but I guess so. He is from DePaul, a junior. Projected to go number 37 to the Wizards. All right. Then at number 29, we have the Raptors. They select Killian Hayes. That name is just crazy enough to go in the first round, and they're projected to go. He's projected to go to the Suns. He's from France. A point guard, Killian Hayes. Uh, all right, and then last we have. <laughs> and we have a, a podcast debut from Sean's mom, yeah. a laundry basket. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, lasted Anthony Edwards projected to go number one to the Timberwolves, the freshman from Georgia, Anthony Edwards. All right, well, we've already said that the other guy is apparently better, so he's gonna just overtake him by 30. Sure, why not? Makes sense to me. All right, well, there you go, there's our draft. Uh, it, and, it only took a year, but we got a ton of fucking responses on Twitter from it last year. I can't wait to see what happens 11 months from now. Yeah. Uh, all right. And then last thing that we have is college football. No, basketball. Oh, college basketball. Oh, yeah. And we you, already did you, football. You knew this was going to fucking happen as soon as I saw Gonzaga at number one. So we're fucking we're, we're, we're going to do a deep dive here just for a minute. I don't fucking give a shit about any other teams. Good for, you know, all the other teams. Congrats. Fuck you, too. Let's look this up. Let's look this up here. I've had just about enough of Gonzaga forever. But here we fucking go again, huh? Why don't you tell me <laughs> why on, they... Hold on. J- just for context, there is a full rant on Gonzaga you can yeah. find on our YouTube channel. It's probably like 25 minutes long. Either It's either 8 or 25, somewhere in that range. Um... Kudos to them for scheduling number six, Kansas, and number two, Baylor, and number five, Iowa, in their first three games. And then they don't play a single fucking good team. Like, old Big East basketball, you would play that fuck, that would be like, you'd play like 10, 11, top 10, or top 15 teams. Yeah. You don't play three and then call it a, a year. I don't. They play Dixie State. They don't even have a fucking logo on ESPN site. Uh, then San Francisco, Santa Clara, Portland, Pepperdine. Why don't you just fucking schedule a road trip down the California coast? BYU twice. I guess you're up for a real challenge at the end of the year. This is just a yearly reminder. Fuck Gonzaga. I don't believe in you. I'm, <laughs> wet, I'm ready to watch you roll down your tears. And for whatever your coach's name, I think his name, their coach's name is Mark Few because that's how, you know, how many real wins he has is a few. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I can't wait to watch you guys go like 37 and two because you'll fucking start one and two and people will be like, what's wrong with Gonzaga? And then two weeks later, people will be like, is Gonzaga the best team in the country? Just <laughs> completely forgetting the fact that they're going to get their ass blown out by Iowa and Kansas. Yep. So fuck Gonzaga. All right. Well, okay. So now that Gonzaga's over, uh, what do you think of the rest of this list? 
Uh, UNC. I'm actually you know, kind of surprised that Rutgers is 24. I mean, Rutgers is going to make the tournament last year for the first time in like forever. And yeah, I guess a lot of their crew came back. They were never ranked last year, I don't think. But. Exactly. But my my point is like, you know, that I, I think they're decent. It's just I didn't expect to see them there. I didn't expect to see oh let's see who was it? There's a I mean I didn't expect to see Iowa at five, let's be honest there. Yeah. I didn't know that Iowa recruited well enough in Cornland country to get <laughs> you know, all the way up to number five. Um uh, the rest is all just blue bloods. Nothing really out of the ordinary except for placement, I guess. Yeah. All right. That's about enough of that. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and catch you next time. Good night. <laughs>